Hey, what's up YouTube? In this video, I'll be showing you how to make a Smith's Toy Store for all of your city building needs. If you enjoy this tutorial, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me and the channel out very, very much. And if you can try and watch as much of the video as you possibly can, that'd be a huge help as well. But without any further ado, let's get started. This is the amount of space you need to make your store a 34 by 37 block area as represented by the white concrete grid on the ground, which I would more than recommend making if you are planning out your city or town or whatever. Here are all of the materials that we are going to be using throughout the build. Please do make sure that you have access to all those materials and enough of them as well. And now that we have all of our stuff, we can get this started. So if you've made the grid come all the way down to the front left hand corner of it and count backwards 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Begin by placing 4 terracotta on top of each other. 1, 2, 3, 4. Extend to the right by 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Join down to the ground and then take that fourth block and extend right by another four. One, two, three, four. Join down to the ground, and then extend on the ground to the right by three. One, two, three. Place a light gray concrete in front, two glass in front of that, one, two, a light gray concrete in front of that, and then Looking forwards, going right of the light grey concrete, we want to place a glass, gap of one, glass, light grey concrete, two glass, light grey concrete, glass, gap of one, glass, light grey concrete. Now we pretty much want to copy what we have over there, over here. So we want to extend the light grey concrete backwards by two with the glass, one, two light grey concrete, terracotta behind, extend the terracotta to the right by three, one, two, three, go up by three, one, two, three, right by four, one, two, three, four, extend down to the ground, take that fourth block and once again extend right by four, one, two, three, four, and then extend down to the ground. And that is what we want to have. So that is perfect. So the next thing that we're going to do, since we are over here, we're going to take the terracotta and we're going to extend the row of terracotta backwards. Now, we are going to count this out, but if you have the grid, you know, just extend it along the back of the grid. So we have to extend the terracotta backwards by 29 rows. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29. We can then extend this across the back of the build and we want to line it up with the front. But the thing is, on the left side of the build, it's a little bit different than the right. On the left side of the build, we want to create a couple of windows. These are very, very easy to make. It's basically the same sort of windows that we've been making all along. We want to take the corner of the build here. We want to, or we can even start from the bottom. From the bottom, we can place two glass. These windows are actually a little bit different. We want to place two glass. Terracotta, two glass, and then an entire row of terracotta extending all the way backwards. So those little two side windows, they are a little bit smaller than the other windows. So, now that we've done that, I feel as though that we should really work on the rest of the building. We're missing two rows of terracotta though. There is a row of terracotta that is extended outwards from the light grey area here. So there's a terracotta here and here extending out of the two front corners of the build. And I'm not quite sure how I want to do this. So I let, let's extend up these terracottas up by two. And we want to do the same thing with the light grey. So the light grey wants to be three rows high in total. And the glass also, everything basically in this particular part, like the outward entrance part, wants to be 
three rows high in total. That's that's how it is. There's an entrance and an exit, so that's what the two separate sides are for. That's why we've got two doors. So the entrance would be that side. All that. Well, honestly, it doesn't even matter. I mean, people kind of just do what they want. But I mean, you know, we've got an entrance and an exit. Um, we want to add a roof to this. So the roof is a little bit tricky. So I want to add a couple of rows of terracotta towards the back here, just kind of like extending this wall upwards that the entrance kind of connects to. And I want to place a row of, this is this is sort of tricky to explain, but a row of light blue concrete that extends above and around the entire entrance area so it kind of wants to overhang the actually does it want to overhang no it, it oh, okay this this is why it's tricky ladies and gentlemen so it wants to overhang the light gray concrete on the left side it lines up with the terracotta on the side but it wants to overhang both of those by one on the front. So on the left and right sides, it just wants to it wants to line up with the terracotta, but on the front, it wants to overhang a row. And from there, if you like, you can then kind of like connect all of the light gray together inside, because of course this is it wants to look nice and clean on the inside here. And we also have to extend up the light blue concrete area as well. So we have to add three rows on top of it. One, two, three. And it, well, it just wants to be three rows high. That's all there is to it, pretty much. We're also going to have to extend it into the store a little bit. But I'm thinking that for now, just for now, we're going to place the light blue concrete so that it lines up with the terracotta for the wall so we'll just leave it at that for now but later on we are going to augment this a little bit so we've got a couple of things to do so we have to fill in these windows so we we have windows all over the place don't we so on the front of the bill we actually have four windows they are three rows in width and i think that they're actually free yeah they're three rows high as well so those want to be filled in on both of those sides and of course in addition to that we're also going to want to fill in the windows on the left side of the build as well so i guess we've got to make the frames for them first um if you just extend across the top row of terracotta and just like extend it down extend the terracotta up that was in between and then just add a little bit of glass everything should work out quite nicely Perfect. Oh, we've got this. How did I miss this? We've got this little window here on the left side of the entrance way there too. Um, something that you might want to do now as well. I mean, we do, we've got to do it later, so why it, we may as well do it now. Um, underneath the windows, I'm going to make that those terracotta. I'm glad that I've got some grey concrete on me to fix that. Perfect. Underneath the entrance, um, these are going to be light grey. Um, for the front, a little bit different, um, they're going to be the floor material, so um, the entrance area is going to be quartz brick, but the area in between here, that's going to be light grey concrete, same thing on the right side here, the windows to the right here are also going to be terracotta underneath, going to make some car parking spaces, should we do that now? Should we do that? I mean, we're here. Okay, so I want to have a pathway. So the path, it's basically going to be two rows, two full rows of smooth stone that basically just allows you to walk in front of and also this like this crevice here will be smooth stone unless you wanted to put plants in there instead that's perfectly viable as well if you did want to do that but i can't, i want to have two rows of smooth stone the just so that you can walk around in front of the store and then we're going to have in between the path and the outer bounds of the build, we're just going to have car parks, car parking spaces, I should say. I guess it is two, technically two different car parks though, because the left and right side are not connected. I'm thinking it might be nice to have some flowers in this little this little part here. So I, I think I'm actually going to leave this grass and I, I'll kind of like figure out a little bit later on like, hmm, 
what do I what do I want that as? So we'll we'll just see a little bit later. But let's get this filled in with smooth stone. We've got our pathway. That's perfect. Car park spaces. We actually already have a row of white concrete here, which is great. So we want to have a row of three grey concrete. Gap, three grey concrete. Perfect. And then we want to dig all of this out. We'll extend the white concrete and the grey concrete towards the front of the stall there. Um, so this will all just get filled in here, 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 here. Just all the way back, just like this. White concrete in between. Yellow carpet on the end. And there you go, car parking spaces. As easy as that. Um... For some reason, I don't know why, because this is such a big store, I shouldn't destroy that, because this is such a big store, I'm imagining this on like a retail park. So, I'm imagining car parking spaces, I'm imagining a nice footpath that goes all the way around, I'm imagining like an, a decent amount of space around this. That's why I've, I've even put windows on the side, like this could easily be a standalone store, doesn't have to be, you can remove those windows, but I imagine this kind of like being off by itself on a retail park somewhere or a larger part of town or a city, you know. It's, I don't think, I mean, you could put this, you know, in a city centre, but it's it's a little too big. I, I wouldn't expect to see one, but, you know, I don't expect a lot of things. So, next thing, we're going to place, we're going to build up the walls of our smiths. So, the walls of our smiths, it's basically the lower half of smiths is terracotta. That's all there is to it. The terracotta is going to be as high. I think it's four rows high in total. Yeah, it is perfect. It's four rows high in total. It comes to the top of the top of the terracotta area on the front of the build. So basically, just here, like this. This is where the walls stop for this part anyway, because we are going to be making the walls a little bit higher. We're going to be involving a little bit of light grey concrete around the top as well. So now that we've got the terracotta, the light grey concrete is basically above and outside of the terracotta. So that's all there is to it. So the light grey concrete is above and outside of the terracotta. It's two rows high in total and it's as high as the roof gets or well not quite the light blue concrete is as high as the roof gets but this is you know very very close i think it's only one row off did i see yeah it's only one row off so it's uh, not too far so we can add the second row and we might also whilst we're up here or we might wait until the end because sometimes it's easy just to add the roof at the end we, yeah, I think that we'll wait until the end to make the roof, because the roof I, I've made in, it's, it's semi-glass, like, I want it to be nice and, um, nice and light inside, basically, because that's how I think about it, so, we'll just leave it at that for now, very, very happy with this, I mean, we've done a huge amount of this right now, next thing that we're gonna do is we will... I think that we can pretty much grab all these materials. Like, actually, let's start off with the banners. So, the banners. Loom, yellow banners, red dye, yellow dye. We got right smiths. I don't know why is, why, why when you hold a banner, your, your arm disappears. Maybe it's a bug. Anyway, loom, open, throw a yellow banner in there. We've got to make our, whoops, we've got to make our first letter, which is... Our only repeatable letter, actually, which is S. So, horizontal row of red across the top, across the bottom, diagonal row, top left corner, to the bottom right. Perfect, that's S. M. So, M, we have to start out with the triangle at the top, coming down. Grab that, put that back in, throw the red out, throw the yellow in, then we go for the mini triangles. Grab that, throw that in, throw the yellow out, throw the red in. Vertical row of right, vertical row of red on the right, vertical row of red on the left. SM. Next is Y, another interesting letter to make. Diagonal row, top left corner to bottom right corner. Grab that, throw that back in, throw the red out, throw the yellow in, make the bottom half of the banner yellow. Grab that, throw that back in, throw the red out, throw the throw the yellow out, throw the red in, and then do the opposite diagonal, top right corner to bottom left corner. So, the next letter would be T. So that is a vertical row of red straight up the middle of the banner, horizontal row across the top. T, perfect. 
Next is H. This is the last letter that we have to make unless we're on survival. H. So, vertical row of... Hey, actually, that'll do. Horizontal row of red straight through the middle. Vertical row on the right. Vertical row on the left. Boom. You've got Smith. But we want Smiths, of course. That's where the second S comes in. Basically, all you got to do is you got to find the middle... I think it, I think it starts here. Okay. So, <laughs> I think that... I want to say that... Okay, no. We start where... This is the middle part of the store, right? So where we have the light grey, two glass, light grey. Follow this up so that you're in the middle of the light blue concrete. Move one row left. S, M, whoops, Y, T, H, S. Perfect. Then Smith's is perfectly centered. That's war that that's awesome. I was saying awesome. <laughs> Am I okay? I don't even know. So I'm gonna get rid of all these materials and I'm going to grab quartz brick, black stained glass. Although we'll probably save that for later, quite honestly. Bookshelves, smooth quartz slabs, smooth quartz stairs. We'll be needing light blue concrete. I know that we'll be needing black glass paint, and we'll need many more. But we'll just leave it at this. We've got a big job to do. Very, very, very big job. I'm highly considering cutting this out or fast-forwarding it, but I might suffer through it. We've got to rip up the floor. That's the first job. Very, very tedious. So we rip up the floor and we replace it with quartz bricks. Yeah, that's that's pretty much it. But I don't know whether to include this in the tutorial. I think I, I guess I will. But this is. This is a long, long project. Like, just doing this feels like like everything that we've done so far combined. I mean, I don't know whether I'm being a little bit too dramatic, but, you know, that that's what it feels like anyway. So, yeah, all this floor's got to get ripped up and then replaced with quartz bricks. Traditionally, I mean, I, obviously this is based on an actual store, like... Whoops. This is based on an actual store. Like, I, you know, I Google image these things. I've been to a Smith's before. They do Pokemon cards. And also, get, they have, like, they always have, like, quite a nice little gaming area, too. So, it's it's not just, like, you know, for, I don't know, kids' toys and stuff. Like, there's actually, it's actually a good store. Like, I mean, I don't want to hate on Toys R Us because iconic draft. But, I mean, Smith's is, it, it's pretty good. I mean, there's... They, they even do board games and stuff. I actually... Is this an advertisement for Smiths? It's actually... It's, it's actually a good store. So... Hmm. The point that I was saying was... Sometimes in these stores, there's like weird coloured floors. Like from my own research. Like sometimes they're like blue. But then I wanted to make the shelves blue. And then it starts looking a little bit weird. Like if the whole store is blue... You know, what are we doing here? You know, so I've decided to make the store nice and bright. I've achieved this by placing... The, there's going to be quartz brick for the floor, which we will eventually get to. But there's also going to be loads and loads of skylights. The only downside to that is, of course, there's actually not much artificial light in the store. So we may have to add... I mean, I'm not going to, but you may have to add some lanterns or some torches if you do want it to be bright when... You know, it's actually uh, night night time, but um, other than that, like during the day, it's absolutely fantastic. I mean, it's as bright as, as it is now, like even when, when the roof is on. So, very, very happy with that. Because the reason that I wanted to make it so bright is because it seems like a nice, happy place, or at least it feels that way to me. Like, uh, you know, anything that kind of like puts you back in touch with things that you liked as a kid. I think it's always like happy, nice little memories. <clears throat> and uh, so hence why I wanted to keep it bright. I am realizing it was probably a mistake to do this on recording because now I'm just rambling and we've, we've got to add the floor now. We've got to the part where the floor is being added. Although it's actually, do, do you guys find it easier to dig or to place blocks? Like, do you, which do you prefer? Because I prefer to just, just place stuff. Like, when it comes to, like, the digging out of an area, like, it's it seems much more annoying than it does just to, like, fill the area in. I mean, I don't know how you guys feel about that. Maybe you'll tell me. So, 
what have we got to add inside the store? So we've talked about the floor, we've talked about the roof. We've got to add the rest of the entrance because the entrance like extends inside, if that makes sense. So we've got to do that. Uh, we've got to add all of these shelves, which isn't too difficult. I mean, it sort of follows a pattern. Um, we've got to add the till area where you would pay. We've just got a couple of cash registers and stuff. And then it's kind of like a, bit, a little bit of decorating. Like, there's, we, we've just got to decorate the area. Um, you may decide, and I do mean you, not, not us collectively. You may decide that you want to... Like, add loads and loads of different things to the shelves to make it look as though that there's loads of different toys and games and stuff on the shelves. But, um, I actually quite like the bookshelf look. You, maybe, maybe this is difficult to understand without the visual, but we will be getting there very soon. Especially now that we've just about filled the floor in. So, let's just put an end to that. Perfect. It looks absolutely massive. Look at the size of it. It's absolutely huge. I mean, these these places are big, though. Like, they, they are kind of massive. So, okay. What we're going to do? We've got to make the rest of the inside. I actually think that it's even and level with the... Or do we add an extra, extra part? I think that we I think that we're going to add, like, an extra part of the entrance. So, what that means is, here... We're going to add two glass, like extending out from the terracotta, unless we... You see, this is tricky. Yeah, I did, we'll, we'll add, like, two glass, and then we'll get the light grey back out again. Glass, glass, perfect. And, and then we've kind of, like, intruded into the store a little bit. And then we want to have the same rows of light grey that we have on the front there, we want to have the same glass that we have on the front, just like this. We want to make the light grey four rows high in total, so we'll extend this around. Just destroy that single terracotta at the top, extend that around. Join all of the light greys up and down. Um, add all of the glass, so here, 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 here. I'm saying here too much. Here, here. Here, here. Here. Whoops. Here, here. There we go. Sound like a town cry from the 1600s. So, now that we have added all of the glass and we kind of have, like, the inside part. Thinking of turn... By the way, I might turn this into... That might look a little bit better as light grey concrete. A little bit. Yeah, that looks way, way better. I think I'm going to extend the light blue concrete in and around the top of the light grey. So this is also going to make it look a lot more freed. So from the outside, obviously, like, the blue concrete looks fine there, but I like the idea that it extends back a little bit further. Very minor detail, but I do like that. So we'll extend this around here, make it as high as it's got to be here. Think that we're going to... How should we do this? Or should we make it either... You know how, like, there's two rows of blue at the front? Should there be two rows of blue at the back, or do we simply, like, do we simply fill the light blue concrete in here, say? And then add... And then extend the light... I mean, how, how high do... Maybe we extend the light grey, so that it sits one row just below the blue concrete? Just here. Like this. And then we'll fill the top of this in using some black glass. So just to keep a sense of depth and such. So just like this here, here, here. I mean, it doesn't have to be symmetrical, right? I mean, does it? I mean, I, th I think it will be fine. Let's take a look from the top. Obviously, there's an extra row of blue on the front. It's making me think that there should be an extra row of blue on the back. But I don't know whether that's going to look odd inside of the store. Why don't we just try it and we'll see. Like, I like... Like, this building is rather symmetrical. Not perfectly, because it's windows on one side rather than the other. And the inside isn't symmetrical. But I like the idea of the top being symmetrical. Like, it just looks a little bit better. That almost looks like a mask or something. That's kind of crazy. But anyway, let's just, let's just leave it at that. And we can always change it if we do decide. So, for the layout... Let's work on the right side first. Because it's this is the quote-unquote interesting side. So... The split in the window here, we want to have a row of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven light 
blue concrete extending out. Gap of one, one to three light blue concrete, another row behind it. We want to have rows of bookshelves extending from the light blue concrete to the glass wall. They do clip into the panes, but oh well, what can you do? It is a pain, <laughs> but what can you do? Anyway, so we're going to run a row of smooth quartz slabs just below the bottom row of the bookshelves here. We're going to stick a smooth quartz stair here just to look like a till. And we're also going to have kind of like a little waiting area sort of line. So this is where you would wait and such. You could even dig into the ground and underneath this glass you could place some light blue concrete. So you'd like walk around here, pay, oh, thank you very much. And then you'd be, you'd be out. So, you know. Um, I want to have a couple of displays, so one display is going to be, it's basically one row away from the end here, two by two square of light blue concrete, gap of one, or maybe a gap of two, should we have a gap of two? Yeah, a gap of two and then a two by two square of concrete, so I quite like that. Yeah, there we go, perfect. And then we're going to put some like heads or something on there. I know that sounds a bit violent, but um, they're going to look like plushies, <laughs> more so than actual heads. So what else do we want to do? So whilst we're on this side... If you come towards this back wall, you want to leave, first of all, a gap of one. I know this gap of one really annoys me, but gap of one, row of three, light blue concrete, one, two, three, gap of three, one, two, three, three light blue concrete, gap of three, three light blue concrete, gap of three. Then you want to have a row of two light blue concrete. These two light blue concretes want to be three rows high, whilst the other rows only want to be two rows high. So, in the end, we want to have something that should look like this. This kind of looks like my uh, like my connection bar on my phone for my mobile data. So what we then want to do is we have our bookshelves and we want to take the middle of the smaller, smaller light blue concrete areas and we want to place rows of six, one, two, three, four, five, six, extending from the middle of these shelves. On the end of these will be the equivalent... There we go, just like that, the equivalent light blue concrete. So if you wanted to, you can kind of jump the gun and you can kind of like place the ends of the light blue concrete, the shelves, and then you can place the bookshelves in the middle. Doesn't matter which way around you do it, genuinely. So there we go, perfect. So there we go, pretty happy with that. Yeah, nice. So these are shelves. We want to add quartz slabs along the bottom of them. So the top half of the bottom leaving an entire row above that that gives us opportunity to place item frames if we want again it we'll see when we get to the point like i actually like how this looks like i know it's simple i know it might be a bit boring but I actually really like it. Like, it's colourful. Like, I don't feel the need to stock the shelves with specific things. But, once again, it, it's going to be your choice. But anyway, th so that is the right side of the store. Quite happy with that. Um, I don't think that we really have to change it. Although we will, you know, I'll, I'll be giving you guys options. You guys know I like to give you options a little bit later on. Okay, let's come to the opposite side of the store now. We have our window here. It's a nice window. There's a pair of them. They look like eyes. Kind of reminds me of a fly. So, we want to leave a gap of one to the right. Mark this out with a light blue concrete. We want to make this three rows high. We want to make it two rows wide. Or depth. Deep. Deep is the word. We then want to place, extending backwards... Rows of five bookshelves. So this is the back part of the shelf here. So one, two, three, four, five, light blue concrete. One, two, three, four, five, light blue concrete. One, two, three, four, five, light blue concrete. And then the corner here is a little bit different in the fact that, um, you know, it gets a little bit smaller towards the back here. Unless we were to make these shelves a little bit bigger. Because these are going to be... But you see, that the thing is, on the back here, we also want to have an equivalent amount of shelves. So, <clears throat> we could make the middle shelves a little bit bigger than the ends. Because this is, this is how far the shelves have to come out at the back, right? So, if we were to, say, destroy this, that means that we've got an extra two book bookcases that we could add. So let's say that on the left here, 
And on the right here, we could instead of five, we could have six. So that would be one, two, three, four, five, six. And then on the left, one, two, three, four, five, six. And if we extend this middle to the right, then we can place light blue concrete in between and we can make these shelves ever so slightly bigger. And it varies them a little bit, like it, it looks pretty good. And then we have this corner piece here in the back and we don't have to have the set by the way we don't have to have the same thing on the right side because obviously we don't have sh have shelves running along the right side of the build so we want to make these bookshelves three rows high in total as we've kind of like made um as we've made the light blue concretes these will have two rows of shelves so we'll have a row of smooth quartz slabs across the bottom just like this and then we're going to add an extra row of shelf kind of like a qu uh, on the top so they're kind of even and then you would place the stuff in between kind of like at eye level so that's that's the purpose of that so we want to have a few more sets of shelves so leaving a gap of three between, let's start at the front. So a gap of three, gap of three, one, two, three. We want to place a row of one, two, three, light blue concrete. Gap of three, one, two, three. And then three, light blue concrete, one, two, three. Gap of four, because the reason that it's four is because of this middle part. So one, two, three, four, and then a gap of one, two, three. So you might be thinking like, why is it different? Um, the reason that being is because there's shelves here opposite the door, there's shelves here opposite the door, and then it, it just like, it spaces out nicely this way. So what we can then do is we can copy the light blue concrete. I don't know why I like doing the light blue concrete first. We can copy the light blue concrete that we have for the middle of these shelves um, there to here just like this and then you see it's kind of up to you what you could do is you could because we've got to have shelves running across the back of the bill Let, let's place the light blue concrete for these shelves running across the back of the bill because it's like a weird it's kind of like an odd number of shelves okay so what i tried to tried to do is along the back wall I wanted to, well, that, that's simply not right, is it? Like, along the back wall, there we go. I think that that's, what happened here? Am I, are my eyes okay? How did I think that that was, there we go, that's, that's fine now. Along the back wall, I tried to space it so that the middles of the shelves along the back wall are simply like the middle of the shelves kind of like space between the light blue concrete of the center of the shelves running through the store. Does that make sense? So between, on the back of this store, we'll have the same three rows high, light blue concrete, and we'll have bookshelves. Again, the, the same height as all of the other large shelves that we have in the middle and along the left side, just like this. And they're all spaced out differently. So, but, but spaced out differently but they the middles of the shelves coincide with the aisles so as you're kind of like looking down the aisles you know you get a nice face full of whatever but it's i don't know like i imagine it laid is it is it because i'm trying to be too symmetrical is that the problem is that why it bothers me maybe so it's kind of up to you how you want to lay it out but you know you've got a back wall of all of these shelves that's a huge shelf i mean you could even separate this further like you can take the edge because i always like to line things up because i think that it looks better if things flow in a particular way you can see how everything sort of lines up it just seems to have a better flow am i crazy i don't know maybe but that it i, th I think that that looks pretty good um, so what we have to do now is we have to raise up all of these central light blue concretes so that they're three rows high. And then we have to add the bookshelves in between them all. And then we have to add the smooth quartz slabs 
um, along the bottom and the top. So, pretty much, we want to have the same thing three times over. I think I'm going to do the section by section, or at least for the bookshelves, and then I'll do the same thing for the quartz slabs. And you might be thinking to yourself, like, is this too much thought to be put into, <laughs> into just shelves? It might be. I don't know why. Sometimes I just get a little bit crazy with these things. It has to be perfect. You know what I'm saying? It has it has to be perfect. What can you do? So also something before I forget it because I may forget it. There is a tiny little display here Basically where the middle of the story so like as you walk in in between here This it's just a tiny little display might even add trapdoors around it because it might look a little bit better And I'll add some like shulker boxes to it to make it look like balls or something, you know, so now that we've done that, just a little 2x2 two two square for us to fill in later, we've got all of our shelving units, you guys know what to do. We just want to add the two rows of smooth quartz slabs. Um, it's along the bottom, it's along the top, that way they're spaced sort of evenly, you've got like an entire row of like an entire row free that you are able to just place whatever you would like on. Just like this. A little bit tedious, but what can you do? But I think that this looks really good. Like, I, I really like the layout of the store. I like the outside. Like, it's simple, but perfect. Or at least I think it is. Like, it, it's so simple. It's so clean. It's just, I, ju I just like it. Like, it's, I, th there's not any weird parts to this store. Like, I really, really like it. I mean, it might look a little bit boring without uh, without any sort of decoration, but we've even got like a nice big part here to walk around. Anyway, we'll we'll talk more about how you can spice things up a little bit later on. The next thing that we're going to make is the till area. So, what do we need to make the tills? Start off with light grey concrete. We need some black carpet, the stairs, birch fence, beacons, chests. Could even use some weighted pressure plates if you like. And that will pretty much do. Okay, so we're going to take the end here of this window. We're going to leave a gap of two. And then we're going to place two light grey concrete. And then we're going to extend that light grey concrete down by two. And then we're going to leave a gap of two between all of this. And then we're going to do the same thing. So a gap of two from the end. Two light grey concrete. Extend down by two. So it looks a little bit like this. We're going to have seats for the cashiers. We're going to have a little chest here just off to the side. And then we're going to have a couple of birch fence extended from the ends with beacons on top. Black concrete on top of the long side of the light grey concrete. And then maybe even a weighted pressure plate on here as well. And there you go, you've got two perfectly nice looking tills. I'm, I'm quite happy with that. So now that we have done that part, we are going to head just into the lobby area. And for the lobby area, we're just going to grab some light blue concrete. We're going to grab the cauldrons, oak fence gates. And I like the idea of having some shopping carts. So, two rows of light blue concrete that are pretty much like in the center, like where we have these two windows, like on the front and the back, just like a little rectangle, and just cauldrons on one side and cauldrons on the other side with oak fence gates that are open to make them kind of look like shopping carts. And maybe we'll even have some promotional items just like above and inside here. And um, that's, that's pretty much like what we're going to have for the moment. So, now that... Oh, oh! Whilst we have it, the weighted pressure plate, I want to place one on this till area here. And also the same thing for the lantern. I kind of like want to place just a lantern on this till area too. And actually, just thinking about it, before we kind of like get to the part where it's going to be like... 
subjective. Like it's gonna, we're gonna get to a point where it's like, ah, oh, I don't know whether I want to add this or whether you will. You know, I want to fill the roof in before we get to that part where we're we're doing stuff where it's like it's it's up to you. So, light grey concrete, black glass, and we're going to fill in the roof. So. It's going to be quite easy because we're going to use the the shelves as a guide on how we're going to fill in the roof. It's, it's going to be dead simple. Basically, you take the middle of the light blue concrete area for the back of the entrance, and we're going to have a row of light grey that lines up with the two middle shelving areas for the middle of the store here. And then we're going to also, I think that we're going to use the window. So we're going to have this split in the window here. And we're going to have another row of light grey concrete. So here, and then the split here. So that is exactly what we want to have. And then it kind of like, it, it just does a good job then of dividing the roof up. And I'm not sure, by the way, I'm not sure whether I want to drop these light grey concretes down and then kind of have a... I'm testing this because I, I'm going to see if I like it. And then I, I'm, I'm going to see if I, I like the glass one row below the light grey concrete. So originally, I placed the glass even and level with like the top of the light grey concrete, but... I might like this better because it, I think it uses up a bit more space in the store. Like, I do I do sort of like that. But then it might also be nice for the inside the store. So, like, well, let's just see what which one we like more. Like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter if we have to rip up some glass. I mean, I do it off recording, but um, I'll, I'll leave it up to you to decide whether or not you like this. So, we can place all of the glass here, just in the top. You see, that my inkling is that the glass will look better from the inside, one row above the light grey concrete. Like, if you're dropping the light grey concrete down, then it will look better. But, I mean, these, th again, this is, this is kind of like a design choice. Like, this, it's sort of up to you. Um, it'll also feel a little bit bigger as well. So, oh, we didn't we didn't drop the light grey concrete down. So, like, I sort of like having these grooves of light grey concrete and then the glass above. I think that looks better than that, definitely. So, that also depends whether you want to drop the light grey concrete down a level or not. It, it, it might make the store feel a little bit smaller. Hmm. Kind of up to you. It, well, not kind of up to you. Completely up to you whether or not you want to do that. I'm, I'm going to test this out because I quite... I, I, it's just a thought that I had whilst I was doing it. I quite like the... I like the depth between the light grey concrete and the glass. And I think that it will just... It will just make it a little bit more interesting in the store. But it might also make it feel smaller because now we have um, kind of like... Uh, what would you call them? These rafters. Kind of like dropping down. Um, I'm going to have to alter that very first row that I placed, aren't I? Which is going to be a little bit unfortunate. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the terracotta on the front and the... Well, the sides, pretty much. The sides of the store. Because you see, there's, there's like a weird gap between that and the roof. So I don't know whether to make the roof... Uh, I don't know whether to add an extra row of light grey concrete. I don't know whether to extend the terracotta up. I don't know. So I think that that's another decision that we're going to have to make before we kind of like get on to the um, cosmetic part of uh, Smiths. Like there's some things that I'm going to do to the inside of Smiths that I'd be like, yeah, you're definitely going to want to do that. It's, it just looks better this way. But then there's other parts where it's like, eh. You know, is is so you know. So let's let's have a look at what we've done now to the roof. Yeah, you see, I sort of like the grooves. I, I sort of like that. Like it it feels like it sort of. I don't know. It feels a bit more full in here in doing that. What what about this though? Like you know you know how we've got these shelves. Do we make them bigger? That's a possibility. Do we extend the shelves up? Does that look a little bit weird? It would look weird with like this. Now that looks strange. So do we keep these shelves a little bit lower? 
And do we opt to add an extra row of terracotta across the top of the shelves? I don't like that. Do we extend the glass, or rather, do we extend the light grey concrete down so that we don't have these? So, let me get rid of this row of terracotta. Like, no, no, yes. So, do we have the row of terracotta across the back? You can see the difference. Or, is it sort of nice to have the depth effect? Um, I don't know. Anyway, I mean, I'd, I'm going to leave it like this. I actually quite like it like that, so I'm quite happy. Ladies and gentlemen, what am I going to be doing next? So, I'm going to grab what I would, what I would consider like the mandatory decoration that we're going to add to the inside of our smiths that will make it just look a little bit better, in my opinion. And then I'll show you things that you can kind of add about the place that may or may not look better depending upon your point of view. But I'm also going to fix that roof over there. So if you give me a second, let me grab all of the mandatory items and then we can get started again. Okay, so I have gathered all of what I would consider to be the necessary materials just to put that nice little finishing touch on your store. So here it is. We've got item frames, a load of music discs to start off with. There's more than this, but you know, I, you don't have to go overboard. We've got some shulker boxes, jukebox, some books. We've got uh, all sorts of different heads, spruce trap doors, and paintings. So, what are most of these things for? I want to place item frames along the top of kind of like this little till area. I also want to place item frames kind of like just on the, just kind of like on the till as well. I'm going to place a load of item frames. Basically, I'm going to place item frames all along where we have the small shelf bookshelves. So the reason for this is because these are, like, this is the gaming section, right? This is where you would get all of the games and such. Actual, like, video games, I should say, specifically. So that is why we've got a load of music discs, and we're going to fill in all of these item frames. Now, once again, if you are trying to go for more of a variety, you've got loads more music discs. I'll replace that. You've got loads more music discs. I'm... I, I, I can't even ball, but how many are there? 15, 60, I, d I don't even know. So, um, feel free to do that. You can even opt to not pl just place music discs here. You can place shulker boxes here as well. Now, sh shulker boxes, I mean, you know, all a lot of Minecraft is interpretation, right? So, shulker boxes could be consoles. They could be... Well, I mean, that that's probably mostly what you're going to buy in the, in the video game section, like games and consoles. But, like, we've got all of our music discs. And by the way, I think that that looks quite cool because, I don't know, it just, it just kind of, like, keeps this area separate. Like, I, think, I just think that that looks really cool. So, what we can then do is we can grab our shulker boxes, uh, jukebox if we want, books. And I like the idea of having a couple of magazines on kind of like this table area here. But if you wanted to, you could destroy some of the item frames, which I don't want to do because I want to keep it like this. And you can have just like console boxes, just like on the top here or on the shelves themselves if you wanted to. Um, I mean, we could even have them here if we wanted to. We could have just... Uh, by the way, I like the red and the blue specifically because it's like a Nintendo Switch. Like it's, it's sort of suggestive. Um, but I mean you could have like white for the PS5 and stuff, you know, if you wanted to. You can have them facing in different ways. You could even have like a jukebox. You could have like item frames. You could have like a book here and there. You can have different discs here and there as well. So, you know, you can get a little bit creative if you want to. Uh, it's, it's, it's up to you. Um, this area here, I like the idea of just having um, plushies pretty much. So those get plushies, you know, quotation marks. Oh, and you can even you can even mess about like if you wanted to keep this separate. Although I quite like the blue, like um, you can make it look like a a bin of sorts, you know, kind of like a bargain bin or something. And you can just have all of your different um, heads here if you wanted to, uh, <laughs> just like that. You can have the same thing outside, by the way. So like you can have just like 
some heads kind of looking just like toys and, and stuff like that if you wanted to. Um, it depends whether or not you think that that looks any good. You can have posters. So, I mean, when I say posters, paintings. You know, you can have paintings kind of like placed about the place. Like, you're going to want to be strategic with them. You're going to want to, uh, you know, kind of like place them in the center of things. Um, at least I would. I mean, you can even place them on shelves if you wanted to, like the ends of shelves. Um, you could even place um, signs on the shelves if you wanted to, to make it look, um, you know, to kind of like label the shelves. But um, another one here, like you don't have to go overboard with the paintings, it's just an idea, you know, so maybe, hang on, so here, <laughs> There we go, I should have done that the other way around. There we are. So, you know, just paintings about the place if you want to. Um, again, not not necessary whatsoever. You might like it, you might not like it. It's, it's completely up to you. I think that this end of the store could probably do with a little bit more colour. So, perhaps some... Some of these, you can even take lanterns, you can hang lanterns, or not even hang them, you can place them on the shelves as well. So that this is what I would do as, kind of like I said, kind of like a, this is what I would say the mandatory, just to keep it nice, like that looks, this section like looks really cool now, right? It's separate from the other sections, that's what I wanted, like I wanted to really, I, I wanted to explain what this side of the store is. And then the rest of the store, the fact that it's a Smith's, the fact that it's a toy store should be rather self-explanatory and the fact that it is just a toy store. So I don't feel the need to fill these shelves up. But if you wanted to fill the shelves up, obviously you got you guys know what to do. Like you need you just add random stuff to these shelves, right? I mean these it if if you take the fact that the crafting table, cartography table, flashing table, if you take away the fact that you know what they are, like they sort of look like a game boxes, you know, especially like that. Like it looks like game boxes. So, like you can add these kind of like about the place if you wanted to. I mean, I'll do, I'll do it to the back. You can even use different shulker, but I, I always find myself using the same colors of shulker. Um, but you can do the same with the shulker boxes across the back as well if you wanted to, you know. So like here and here. I mean, a lectern sort of looks like something. I don't. I get, don't ask me what it looks like it looks like something same with the brewing stand it looks like something like it it you've got to use your imagination of course but you know that specifically like the this 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 now that that is a little bit unimpressive i mean at the top though if you could see the top i mean it does look a little bit better if we got a substitute for the smithing table i mean you could even have like a you know like a fake easy bake oven or something you know like it doesn't matter. I mean, it it just looks like stuff on the shelves. And feel free to stock all of the shelves up like this if you want to. I'm happy as it is, but you might feel the need to do that. But, ladies and gentlemen, believe it or not, you might not believe it. I, I'm not sure I believe it. We're kind of done. Unless you want to place paintings on kind of like the... I mean, that might even look good to place like paintings in the middle of the windows. I think, I, let's test it. Let's see if it looks good. Um, kind of like on the outside... <laughs> <laughs> Not what I wanted to do. <laughs> um, paintings cut because they just look like advertisements on the outsides of the windows. That might be a good addition. But other than that, I'm very happy with how this has turned out. I am very, very happy. I, d I don't feel the need to add anything else. I'm, I'm genuinely rather happy with how it's turned out. The paintings don't look bad. I'm not sure if I do like them like better than the original, but I... I'm very happy with what we've done here, ladies and gentlemen. I think that we've finished. Let's take a little bit of a tour and then we'll say our goodbyes. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is what our Smith's Toy Store will look like once it has been 100% fully completed. I hope that you guys have enjoyed making this one. I had an absolute blast designing and making this. I really, really liked it. It was it was a, definitely a fun one to build. Definitely in the top 5% of fun stuff to make. So if you have enjoyed this tutorial, please do remember to hit that like button as it really helps me in the channel out very, very much. If you're new around here, please do consider subscribing and clicking that little bell next to the subscription button. That'll ensure that you get all my videos sent directly to your sub box. And if you do want to make anything else by me, check out the card system, the description below, and the top of the comment section for 
more. I'd highly recommend the City Builds playlist. That is going to be the go-to playlist, especially because that is pretty much all I'm building on the channel at the moment is City Builds. I'm really, really loving um, exploring and designing and just having a, a really good time um, playing about with all sorts of different city related builds so check that out card system description below at the top of the comment section will be able to find it dead dead easy thank you so much for watching everybody i love you all very much and i'll see you guys in the next one good bye